Hello again, uh, this is Jason from stemonline.com, uh, an math online math and physics uh, tutoring company where we specialize in helping students from uh, grades 11 all the way through and including second year uh, university uh, slash college uh, level uh, mathematics and physics courses. Okay, so in today's, uh, today's video, we're going to do um, some more more types of math problems, uh, mainly uh, specializing in contest level math. Okay, so typically the, this question will have the difficulty level equivalent to contest level uh, contest level math at the grade twelve level. Okay. Okay, so let's look at uh, how we can algebraically. Uh, simplify the following expression. How can we simplify and interpret the complex expression 1 plus i all to the nth power for, for problem solving purposes? Okay. All right. Uh, yeah, this problem will be great for uh, any math Olympiad, AMC, or any other competitive uh, exam preparation, Euclid, uh, Fermat, Gauss, whatever. Okay. So, how are we going to solve this? Okay. Step one. Okay, so let's do step one here. So step, step let me just put the solution area. This will be the solution. Okay, so solution. Solution. Solution area. And then I'll point out step by step here. Okay, solution. So step one. Step. One step one is uh, we need to express so express express uh, a complex number complex 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 number complex number. In the form Z, okay. In the form Z, okay. Z equals A. Max, I'll make room here. So we need to say that. We'll just say Z. So Z equals A plus I B. The real part of the complex number A and the complex part B. Okay. And this can be written, you want to write it in the form, okay, just one second, uh, write it in the form, in polar form, so write, write the complex number, flex number, In polar form. Okay, so in polar polar form, and this can be rewritten as the following: Z. Okay, so Z is equal to R times cosine theta plus I sine theta. Okay, where I'll define some stuff here. Where where r equals r is equal to the square root of a squared plus b squared. Okay, and we'll, that's one of our formulas, like the Pythagorean, Pythagorean theorem. Okay, and theta is equal to arc tangent. Theta is equal to arc tan of b over a. If this is correct. Okay. Now for for the complex number. Uh, 1 plus i, what we're going to do is, obviously, a is 1, right? So, a equals 1, and b equals 1. How do I know this? Well, because we're in the form z equals a plus ib that I wrote above, where a is this coefficient, b is this coefficient of the i, okay? 
so straightforward, right? Uh, that means we can find the modulus, right? Right. So the modulus, modulus is the formula I used above, right? R equals the square root of a squared plus b squared, and in this case, that would be equivalent to the square root of 1 squared plus 1 squared, which is equal to the square root of 2. Okay, therefore the argument, the argument, argument now becomes, because let's find the argument, the argument is theta, theta is equal to arc tangent, arc tan, of b over a, this would be arc tan of 1 over 1, this is equal to arc tangent of 1, okay, arc tan of 1, which gives us uh, pi over 4, okay, right, because the ta arc tan is tan inverse, tan inverse of 1 is an angle, tan of an angle that gives you a uh, an answer of 1, that will be pi over 4, 10 pi over 4 is 1, therefore arc tan of 1 is pi over 4, okay? Uh, thus the polar, so we already have the polar form, because that's how we're going to solve this problem, we have to take it from the regular complex number, translate it into polar form for now, okay? So, polar, polar form is 1 plus i, is equal to root 2, right, root 2, bracket, cosine uh, pi over 4 plus pi sine pi over 4, okay? However, this is not our final, final result here, because, how do I know that? Well, the solution to this, right, has to be in terms of n. Our, our problem said solve z is equal to 1 plus i to the n. We figured out that 1 plus i can be written in polar in polar form, but we have to have the whole expression written to, written to the nth power, okay? So the next part that we have to do is we have to uh, use something, okay? So step one was, let me just erase this here, okay? This thing, therefore, here. I like to use the therefore symbol. Okay. Uh, we have to use something called De Movier's theorem. Okay. So we're going to use step two now. Okay. So step, let's go to step two here. So I'll move step two, maybe over here, make more room. So step, step two, apply. De Movier's, De Movier's theorem, Vier's theorem, okay. De Movier's theorem states that for a complex number in polar form written to an integer n power, anytime when you have a problem, right, uh, of a complex uh, number that is written in polar form but is raised to the nth power, which we do have, it can be written with this formula. All square brackets are parentheses cosine of theta plus i, right? So i sine theta, all parentheses, close square brackets to the nth power is equal to r to the n, okay? r to the n bracket cosine of parentheses n theta right plus i sine i sine parentheses and theta okay thus using this formula well we're going to get the following right we're going to get that one plus i to the n is equal to close square brackets root two parentheses cosine of pi over four plus i sine pi over 4, brackets here, 
oh, in parentheses, full square bracket to the nth power, right? So we're using this left part of the formula of the Molière's theorem, right? All raised to the n, translated uh, into polar form, raised to the nth power, but that can be equivalent to the right-hand side, which is going to be r to the n, in this case, r is root 2 for the modulus, 2 to the n, parentheses, cosine of n pi over 4, plus i sine sine uh, n pi over 4. Okay. Now, since, since we know that uh, the modulus of root 2 all to the n can be written in terms of 2 to the n over 2 power, right? We can now write, can now write, we can now write that 1 plus i to the n is also equivalent to this. 2 to the power of n over 2, okay, bracket, cosine of n pi over 4 plus i sine plus i sine n pi over 4, okay? All right, so uh, how do we interpret this, okay? So this looks like to be like our solution. How do we interpret this information, okay? Well, first off, you notice that the magnitude, the factor 2 to the n over 2 gives the modulus for the absolute value of 1 plus i all to the n, okay? Which is especially useful when comparing the sizes of complex numbers or when computing norms, okay? So the modulus formula for complex numbers is very important. Periodic behavior. You'll notice that the trig trigonometric function, cos n pi over 4, sine n pi over 4, reveal a periodic nature with period of 8, since n pi over 4 repeats every two uh, every two pi when n increases by 8. Uh, this periodicity is a common theme in contest problem solving involving roots of unity, okay? So if you do contest problem solving, may not be exactly this question, but something close to it, if it has a complex, quite often they have at least one complex number uh, problem, uh, it would either involve something to do involving roots of unity and symmetry, which is what we're dealing with somewhat here, okay? Uh, another thing is that the real and the imaginary parts, all right? So by writing this result on the form, you can easily extract the real and imaginary parts, right? So the real part, let's look at the real, right? So the real, so the real part, okay? So this is the real part, the real, the real part, I'm going to highlight this, is going to be equivalent to this, okay? It's going to be, so the real, usually say capital R-E, of the complex number 1 plus i all to the nth power is equivalent to 2 to the n over 2 cosine of n pi over 4. That's just this part without the i after foiling it out. Uh, the imaginary part, imaginary, imaginary part, imaginary part, Okay, is this going to be the next part over here? The imaginary part's always uh, part of, is the modulus uh, with the i part here, right? Anything attached to the i is going to be the imaginary part, but we have to follow in the modulus. So this becomes im imaginary of one plus one plus i to the n. Okay, and this is equal to 2 to the n over 2 sine n pi over 4. Sine n pi over 4. That's the imaginary part. Okay. All right. So it gives us a good interpretation of what's real and what's imaginary. But our final answer is what we have above. This is our final answer. All right. Written in polar form, which is using Demovier's theorem. Okay. This solution is not only elegant, but also extremely useful for tackling various contest problems that require a manipulation of complex numbers and their properties. All right, so if you enjoyed 
uh, this video, like and subscribe. Uh, the, and, and if you're looking for more help with contest uh, math problems or any other type of uh, math course, you can contact uh, my company, uh, www.stemoneonline.com or my email, right? Email is jason at stemoneonline.com for more information. Okay? I hope this helped. See you in the next video.